Good evening, everyone. Do you know what the ladies in the pictures are actually doing? They are actually using calculators to compute the calculations. And this was a common job back in the 1920s to the 60s, where they were called human computers. And it is simply before the birth of a mechanical computer. Let's bring forward to the 70s until the 90s. This piece of machine is a copywriter, a typewriter. It was virtually on every single desk in every office. It is at the vital of a business operation to basically prepare the documents and transfer the message to the recipient in a formal way and a faster way. The word WPM was simply word per minute. And what it means is how many words can you actually type per minute? You could have a 20 word per minute, you could have 40 word per minute. And it was basically a vital key performance indicator, and it was basically on every single resume. Let's bring forward to another 10 years after the millennium. In the last 10 and 20 years, there were many jobs, like the last two have disappeared, but there were many new jobs have been created because of technology. Let's think about the creation of the internet before the 2000, back in the late 1990s. The web page has given a new job to web designer. The creation of mobile smartphone has given new job to UI UX designer as well as mobile application engineers. The birth of YouTube, what has been created? A new generation of performers, YouTuber. We did not hear about the term in the last 10, 15 years. Therefore, work has never been stopped changing. It has never been progressing. The only thing is it has been progressed way faster than ever because of the artificial intelligence, AI, and the automation. Now, should you be worried about it? Yes and no. Artificial intelligence is basically everywhere. It is already in our daily lives. For example, traffic light. Do you know our traffic light system has already adopted AI back in the 80s? Flight schedule, weather forecast has already been using artificial intelligence, big data to predict what is going to happen. Stock market, what are the analysts use to actually predict the stock and hence create the reports? They are all using big data analysis to actually predict and even influence whether the stock price is going to go up or down because their report is influencing the purchase and selling, which influence the demand and supply. The warehouse, transportation, logistics, are all adopting artificial intelligence now to try to improve their performance, to increase the efficiency. Let's take a look at these ladies. I take, it, I take her as a lawyer. Please, if you can think about it, what is the lawyer actually doing? A lot of the contracts that we are using are actually just coming from a bunch of templates. They are basically just changing some key terms in the contract between the new buyer and seller to actually reach to a term. They are not changing the whole contract. They are not creating the contract. For example, sales and purchase agreement. For example, non-disclosure agreement. All these are simply merely changing a small part of the terms. I'd like to give you an insight to one of the work that I've been involved in. We've been helping a firm to create, a legal firm to create, to improve their efficiency. And what are the, what are the legal consultants do, or what they usually do, are simply just 
spending the consulting hours with new clients, um, a simple contract like sales and purchase agreement would probably take up to four to five consulting hours, and hence their capability is limited. It depends on how many, how many legal consultants you have. That means what are the output or what are the total revenue, potential revenue that the firm could have. What we used was simply to use artificial intelligence to extract the information from the common contract and then summarize it for the legal consultant to actually reduce their working hour and still able to identify the risk in the contract. And what they do is simply trying to avoid any potential risk for both parties. Let's think about for the millennial. The job for the millennials, especially in the first few years of their professional life, are basically repetitive, boring, and complicated as well. Is that what you really want? Let's give an example of investment banking. That is probably the dream job of a lot of the young graduates. And the truth is, in the first few years of, of um, junior associates in, the, in, in an investment firm, what they do is simply just read the contract, read the reports, tons of reports every day, prepare the summary for the senior to actually prepare a, a much better output and then perform an action. They do not have a lot of opportunities to actually perform a much more intelligent work. So why are they wasting their time in the first few years of, of their professional life? A lot of millennials are actually disappointing in the first few years of their life, thinking, what should I be doing? Even if I can get into the firm, I'm just doing all these boring jobs. Shouldn't, be, shouldn't these tasks be taken by machine and put a person who has spent the last four or five years to actually prepare him or herself for the professional world? Is the experience really count that much? If you come to think about it, not so much. Let's rewind back to the typewriter. Before that, back in the 90s, you have courses of how to type a document to train you how to type the documents. Let's put yourself back to today. You probably know how to type faster than anyone for text messaging or chatting before you actually go into a university. So do you still need to learn how to type or do you still need to learn how to perform these repetitive and boring tasks? The answer is yes and no because society does change, does improve because of technology. I would like to give three takeaways to the millennial today. First is creativity. Human creativity, creativity will never be replaced because it is irreplaceable. Humans are able to create new things. A machine needs human to actually perform the task to reach to an output. Let me give you another example. In the last one or two years, you probably heard of Google's DeepMind. What Google DeepMind did, showing on the newspaper, was simply they have beaten the world's best Go player, which is one of the most complicated chess. Do you really think that is fascinating? No. There are two things when I read it, two take away from me. One is, it is not really solving a real objective. The main objective of a Go game is not to solve the game. It is to have fun. Why do we want to solve the game if we're going to have fun? When we, when we are solving the whole complete equation, what fun do we still have? Number two, it is not creating a new game. It is simply following the protocol, the rules that have been set by the creator of the game, which was probably 2,000 years ago. Machine is still not creating 
new set of rules. It is simply following what the human has given them and to create an output that is decided by the human as well. Second, integration. Science does not speak to business, unfortunately. Let's think about the, the birth of internet. When the birth of internet, has internet really replaced many jobs? Many people were fearing that internet would take away a lot of jobs. But internet has also created a lot of opportunity as well. Like I said, the web designer, UI UX designer, software engineers, to even YouTuber. If you are, if you are telling, probably a lot of your parents still don't understand what a YouTuber means. But this is simply to you, to my son, watching on YouTube is simply a norm. A TV is not a necessary anymore. And this, if we put it back 20 years ago, people would not be able to imagine that. And the most important thing is, it is simply requiring humans for us to actually decide an objective. Hence, we can actually give the machine an instruction to perform the activities to reach the objective that we desire. Let's give another example of legal or consultant where I have given you that AI could probably take away some of their jobs, but it is not because we are simply taking away, or I should say technology simply takes away the borrowing and the rep repetitive part of the, perform of the actions and leave the human to actually think more and create more things. And that leads to last one, opportunity. When a technology is born, it usually creates new opportunities and problems. And that problems simply requires humans to solve it. Let's talk about the latest technology of you might heard AI, blockchain, VR, AR, IoT. Do we simply just hear about AI and it is there? No, it is not. It requires human to actually think and use the technology as a tool to solve the problem. And let's think about it. Even with the technology that we have today, is, are we going to stop the technology from advancing to the next year? No. Your mobile phone is progressing every day, every year or even months that you have new mobile phones. You're seeing new, new style of mobile phone with higher speed. And if you think yourself, if in two years time, if you look back to today's mobile phone, you're gonna think that this is a huge brick of nonsense that you're not gonna use. It is simply outdated, which means today, this technology is simply not enough and we need to progress. How do we progress? Technology doesn't progress by itself. Human decides and creates. How are we gonna to progress to the next? We never thought that a simple YouTube program would have created so many opportunities. Google, Amazon, Yahoo, you probably don't know about Yahoo anymore. Um, <laughs> that was probably in my time. Facebook, um, it has created so many new type of jobs, but how, how did the job was created? It was not created by the provider of, let's say, Google or Facebook. No, they, even they did not think about this. It was created by everyone, by the power of the crowd. And my last takeaway of today is simply, as a millennial, when you come to think about designing or thinking about your job, your first job, don't worry, because no one is going to hold onto one job in your lifetime. Whether you are an engineer or you are a mechanical or you are a medical doctor, you are still going to learn new things, perform new tasks, and try to improve your life. And that is where you can find the opportunities, how to improve yourself, how to use your creativity 
to actually create new things within a set of protocol at this moment. Because if you think back in the future, even just one year later, what you do today is simply not enough. And it will never be enough. Thank you.